So I'm on my way to go shoot some more footage for this Dan Wesson review, the extended review of this gun going past 10,000 rounds. And I decided, seeing as it, it is an indoor range, I'm not going to accommodate for the haters. I'm just going to wear my Oakleys the entire time. And for those of you that are into Ray-Bans, I don't care. Ray-Bans are gay. Ha! guy with the regular guy firearms channel and I gotta be honest with you this is like the 40th time I've tried this intro today I can't talk very well so please give me some breathing room if I stutter a little bit welcome back this is gonna be our second uh, longevity review on the Dan Wesson 1911 um, this is their specialist um, I've carried this guy on and off for about a couple of years it's been through about half a dozen courses and several different competitions before I decided to hang the whole competition thing up and, on top of all of that, I've just recently crossed over the 10,000 round mark for this guy. Um, so, we're going to go over uh, a few things, reiterating a couple of things from the very first review that was done over a year ago. But, going over things that I've noticed about it, um, just over the course of time. Uh, first and foremost, um, the ability to conceal carry this bad boy is actually a lot easier than a lot of people would make it seem. Um, a lot of guys say, oh, well, 1911s are very heavy and very large. That is actually very true. It is a two-plus pound handgun. There isn't a single part in here that isn't made out of steel. Um, and it's, it's rough to carry around as far as just weight is concerned because it'll tug on your fucking belt. But what makes it much easier to carry than, than a lot of other handguns out there, particularly compact, quote-unquote, sized uh, 45s in it or anything in its class is the fact that it's actually really thin. I mean, the fact that the width of this holster with a light is actually thinner than a Glock 30, for instance, m has its own little appeal as far as carrying the gun is concerned. Now, of course, aside of the weight issue, you also have to deal with this pistol grip. I mean, pretty much every time that I drop something or have to pick something up, I gotta squat, because if I bend, it looks like I have a fucking tail. Um, so, now that as far as the whole carryability thing is out of the way, um, we're gonna go we're pretty much from top to bottom. We're gonna start with these sights. Uh, these are high knee straight eight sights. Um, the reason why it states that they are straight eight sights is that the bottom portion of the 8 is on the rear sight. Also, they're night sights. Um, this, the rear sight happens to be an amber, and the front is a green. Now, I personally like offset colors on sights simply because if I'm actually shooting at night or in the dark and I'm not using a freaking light, which you should in the first place, um, the offset sights and the fact that they are a straight 8 design means that I'm not going to accidentally misalign dots. Now, a lot of people will scoff at that and say, well, why the fuck would you misalign sights? What are you, retarded? Well, the problem is, is that under speed and the fact that you can't see anything other than these glowing orbs in front of you means that a lot of people tend to misalign sights. The fact that you don't have to worry about that with these sights and the fact that they're stock is pretty nice. Same thing, uh, well, actually, additionally, with these sights. There's a nice little ledge there that helps you out with one-handed manipulations, and they're sharp as fuck, uh, which I think is great because it just helps you for grasping things, and honestly, um, if it gets to the point where I have to beat somebody with this thing, these sights are friggin' sharp. 
but mostly it's for one-handed manipulations, and I really dig the fact that they really grip stuff and that they're rather aggressive. Um, moving on, we are going to the slide serrations here. Um, they're subtle, but they're aggressive. I mean, if you look closely, you can see little shavings that used to be attached to my hand on these particular slide serrations. They're subtle, but they're aggressive, so they work. Moving on to the controls of the damn thing, I really do like the fact that they, it does accommodate enough for a lefty to where I can mess with the safety without having to worry about other things. And I like that they do go the actual mile in making full-sized fucking controls for the left and right hand safety. This is great because a lot of times you'll see half-assed attempts at this and it just makes manipulating the handgun a little bit more difficult. In large controls, as far as magazine release and slide release, this is like the one handgun that I'm okay with this, uh, simply because I have enough disadvantages dealing with a single stack magazine and whatnot. I have enough issues making sure that the gun is as up as possible, meaning rounds are loaded and the fact that I have to transition through that probably in the middle of some crazy shit are a tremendous disadvantage. The fact that I have easily accessible controls and as a lefty I can operate the entire gun with just my trigger finger is a huge plus. Especially with this big ass ledge. Because if I encounter malfunctions of the double feed type, and unless I've set it up, I haven't had them yet, I can just get the gun back into the battery or lock it up depending on what I need. So enlarged controls are a big plus. The magazine well, as far as speed of manipulation, also helps also. Um, let me say also a couple more times. Um, it's subtle, and it works. So it's not like this gigantic fucking freedom bell mag well that a lot of these dudes like to sport on their guns. It, it, it fits the form and function of the gun and actually assists you, so it works. The grip panels are the thing. My personal opinion, they're second to none. Um, you don't have to. S a lot of people complain about aggressiveness and whatnot. Honestly, I don't want this. I want this fucking gun welded to my hands, especially if I'm in an actual self-defense shoot. I do not want to sit there and dick around with grip. So, the grip panels on the thing and how very well done the checkering is on the front and back strap help out significantly. And honestly, if you if you look close enough, you can see you can see little shavings that used to be attached to myself. So, it works. Um and also with enlarged controls, this grip safety. Now, I personally fucking hate grip safeties. I think they're unnecessary and I think that there is enough manual crap going on here as well as a decent quality holster keeping you from touching the bang switch here. But the, um, the grip safety is conscious of shooters, and I dig that from Dan Weston simply because it doesn't take hardly anything at all to touch the thing off and make your gun usable. So while it's annoying, it's good that they had actually thought about the shooters and made this, one, enormous, and two, nice and easy to touch off. Um, Next thing is with this 1913 rail. It's rather low profile, doesn't get all up in the freaking way, and it helps me sport stuff like the TLR-1 here. TLR-1 has been an awesome light in itself, but the fact that this doesn't come loose and that the rail itself is too spec, not, not tight, not loose, is just another little add-on add, add -on to the awesome here. Okay, so now let's go over the longevity stuff. Um, first things first. Is it an accurate gun? Well, you're going to check that out right about now, because I did do some accuracy tests.
Now, as far as reliability and stuff is concerned, guys, um, now, everyone who uses their handguns a lot will get into malfunctions of some kind. It's either because you're using really crappy ammo, and everyone who shoots a lot has bought some shitty ammo, or you're just wearing the damn thing out and you have to replace parts. Now, aside of wearing the thing out and getting uh, failure to extract issues, because I have replaced two extractors uh, and the subsequent springs on this particular handgun, um, and of course you get your warning signs and then eventually you get your stovepipes, you're like, fuck. And then you start to shoot a little more and you see the ejection pattern fanning a lot. So you're like, okay, change that out. When you change it, the gun runs like a typewriter. Aside of malfunctions like this, or with recoil springs wearing out, because I've changed two of those also, um, I've had exactly two malfunctions with it. The two malfunctions that had nothing to do with performance issues or anything like that were two failures to go into battery. Now, these were both at the end of 1,500 round courses, and I didn't clean the gun at all, and they were both on separate courses. It seems that once it gets around 1500 rounds the action gets dry enough to where I can I am at risk of getting a failure to go completely into battery simply because of those two malfunctions but as far as additional reliability is concerned especially high volume fire lots of 1911s have issues with this and while this isn't really an extensive demo of it I'm just gonna run uh, in the next clip six magazines back to back and you'll see that it runs without even missing a beat on any of them. And this is either extracting, this is just the firing cycle. It runs as if it's supposed to run like a combat gun, which is what I'm impressed with. You know, so a lot of people ask me on a regular basis, um, what are 1911s that you would personally recommend that you would go to war with and everything else? Um, I've done a few different 1911s on this uh, on this channel. One was a Nighthawk GRP. This one, of course, a, uh, a Colt Series 80 and a, uh, a Scorpion from SIG. Uh, among those guns, um, I would personally have to rate this right at the top shelf, right alongside the Nighthawk Custom. And the only reason why I say that is that the, um, it, it's just run like a typewriter. It hasn't given me a reason to bash it really for anything. I mean, hell, on my Glock 19 that has, yes, been in grotier conditions than this, and yes, it's been shot a lot more, um, I have had more malfunctions due to either bad magazines or some crap with it than with this gun. So, I mean, it's performed above the expectations that I had because on a regular basis, you see production 1911s that you can just buy off a shelf, take a nosedive, I mean really hard too. And apparently, I'm not the only one that thinks so. So, um, there's, there's a lot to be said about that. Especially since, I mean, hell, most 1911s are, that are out now are mainly built as target guns with the guise of self-defense on them. So all they have is a really tight action to improve accuracy a little bit and a trigger that's a crutch because 1911 single action triggers are the shit as far as semi-auto guns are concerned. And there's probably a reason why guys get really passionate about defending it because they tend to shoot really well with this and they shoot like crap with other guns that are out there. But it is what it is. Um, egos get the best of lots of guys. So, 
Now, as far as wear is concerned, I'm going to rip this guy apart really fast, and I'm going to show you how it's aged over the last 10,000 rounds, and you'll see another reason why I really like this handgun. Alright guys, so I got this guy ripped apart, and uh, I had to clean out a bunch of the junk because you guys needed to see um, basically the high wear areas in the gun. And of course the haters are going to be all like, oh, well, you should clean that gun all the time, blah, blah. Clean guns for people that don't use them. Sorry. Um, so check it out. I'm actually really impressed by this finish. Um, you can see where there's definitely some wear in there, but there isn't as much as you would expect from guns that have cheaper finishes on them. And from what I understand, there is a very uh, specific uh, process that they go through to finish their particular handguns and if you compare that to the wear on this TLR1 I mean it's clear that this handgun is a lot better uh, finish on it than most do um, also I take I take apart a hand, uh, 1911 like an idiot because I don't give a fuck about that little um, about the idiot scratch quote unquote that people keep crying about because personally this thing is a screwdriver to me but you can actually see I've taken this guy apart many times and it's held up quite nicely to all of it. Um, even the portion of the safety that dings into shit the most when I'm carrying the gun around, that isn't that badly worn and through 10,000 rounds I'm actually very impressed. Uh, same can be said about the slide here. I mean it's actually very hard to look into but there's very little wear on, this, on the inside of this guy at all which I think is wonderful. Um, Dan Wesson takes a lot of pride in their particular finishes and having not exposed this to salt water of any kind or anything like that, it's just been it's just been carried on my body and generally speaking when I carry a gun I carry it uh, with an undershirt on also so it's not making direct contact with me and not as much sweat gets to it as it would other guns because I am trying to take care of my shit um, you can see on the most highly worn parts of this handgun, let me kill one of these lights, on the most highly worn parts of this gun, there's actually not that much to really deal with. You know, so I don't have to worry about that terribly much. You can see this dirty ass barrel that's in here because I just did a wipe down cleaning. I still have to clean it in the most major way. But... I mean, hell, it, it's done great. Even even the cheaper, quote-unquote, parts that are in this guy have worn superbly. You know? But, while noticing the great finish that's on this thing, I've also noticed over time, and over the years of shooting this thing, or and 1911s in general, that the splayed-out parts that you see before you, this might have been the fucking hotness way back when, when this thing was in service and when this thing was actively shooting people and even currently today a lot of people might think of it as some kind of awesome but to me this is no combat gun honestly I mean it might do fine um, if you're an officer on the street it might do fine if you're concealed carry and stuff like that I'm not taking this gun to the desert it is far too maintenance heavy and it is far too finicky I mean feels this is a field strip and all the parts associated with it versus the four parts total associated in a field strip of again like a Glock 19 or a Smith & Wesson M&P or an M9 even even though I fucking hate that thing or a 6 hour P226 there's just many design there's, there's many 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 designs out there that are a lot easier to fuck around with as far as um, maintaining the thing as it is in 1911 and honestly all this really is for me is to be honest aside of carrying it every once in a while it's novelty shooting and yeah a lot of guys are gonna say oh well I've been using the thing for years on the beat as a cop or you know um the nine billionth SF guy on the internet that's been using this for years and I'm gonna say that you're fucking retarded but honestly guys what about this gun can't be done by Glock 21 it's as simple as that. Or a SIG P220 with more round count, less maintenance, and higher performance. It really is all that is. 
So I'm going to throw this guy back together and we're just going to kind of do a summary. All that being said, guys, honestly, I understand why a lot of guys get into the whole 1911 thing, okay? There isn't much more American than a 1911 and 45 other than apple pie. I get it. Um, whether or not it's worth it to buy one of these things is totally friggin' subjective. Because honestly, as far as semi-automatic handguns are concerned, this is, without a doubt, a stock car or a Porsche. This reference has been made a million times simply because it's very true. It is a high-performance machine. You can be very fast and very accurate with the thing. Just understand that you're going to pay a premium for that little bit of extra speed when you can learn that speed through a Glock 19. Also be aware of the fact that, generally speaking, unless it is a hand-built or GI-spec gun, or, I guess this particular handgun, generally speaking, they don't work worth a fuck. And that's a problem, you know? I mean, and a lot of guys are going to come on to this video in the comments and say, oh, I've shot a billion rounds through my 1911, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I've seen so many of them fail to the point where I don't, I don't give a damn how many static range rounds you fired through your 1911. Chances are, you don't even know if it works or not. So, it, it is what it is, guys. But honestly, this particular one has not let me down. I mean, I've tried. I've tried to put it through a lot of different abuse. It's just kept on coming. And it's continually surprised me over and over and over again to the point where it is one of the very, very few 1911s that I would actually trust with my life. So remember guys, you can track me on the Facebook page now, I'll leave a link to this to that in the description below. That's under the regular guy firearms page. Um, you can search uh, for me on Instagram now through my YouTube name. Uh, please do me a giant favor guys and smack the like button and subscribe, it helps me in an enormous way and it helps keep these videos coming. And remember, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.